Okay, good morning, guys. Um, our first project here for uh, Tent 1159 would be to create a custom tray for a complete maxillary and complete mandibular. So uh, I thought it would be a little bit different if I used um, a different model. So then you can apply the same principles to uh, the model that we're using. Uh, the reason I do so, or I'm trying to do so, is that you can use more of the applied information rather than saying, you know, coming up to the front of the room and saying, well, where did you draw your line? That's where I should have my line. But the whole idea here is this is an Alzheimer's impression. This is an Alzheimer's impression of my own. A uh, female patient, um, 59 years old. Um, and this is an Alzheimer's impression taken. You can see there's a little void here at the front and the whole idea now is many dentists will go ahead and try to uh, manufacture the full denture on the preliminary impression and then the dental technician will have to guess at the extensions of the denture and that guess is to find out where the attached and detached mucosa starts so the denture is not overextended inadvertently many dentures out there in the in the marketplace end up overextended or underextended and the patients just either go without or are returning to the dental offices for subsequent adjustments. So again, here I am taking a guess at the attached and detached mucosa. I'm drawing a line where I will think the denture to finish. My final impression with my custom tray will replicate those um, extensions with the use of heavy body uh, silicone or a compound. There's a hamular notch here, looks a little bit tight. Or, and you can see where their old denture finished. I'm going to put the, the uh, custom tray to finish around the same area. And then this extra here onto the soft palette, I will probably use a uh, border mold with a uh, compound. So if the model has uh, extreme undercuts, we don't want the tray to bind with any of the tissue. We want an equal, um, excuse me, we want an equal thickness of impression material. Now, I think it's important to know when we're making a custom tray what the final impression is going to be. Is the dentist or practitioner, denturist, uh, going to use a polyether, polyvinyl siloxane, or silicone, or are they going to use zinc oxide still? Uh, or I've seen some dentists say, thanks for the tray, I'm taking another alginate with it. <laughs> so therefore, are we perforating the tray or are we not? So I'm going to uh, assume that mainstream these days is a polyvinyl siloxane, heavy body, medium body, light body, or a combination thereof. So I want to make sure that there's no undercuts. It will be a thickness of about three millimeters to, of uh, impression material. Even though I've drawn my line of the extension of the tray, I'm going to wax all the way to the end. Uh, basically overextend the block out. Now, I'm just free-flowing wax here. Obviously, you can look in many denture textbooks or dental laboratory treatment textbooks, and they're going to get a, uh, a sheet of wax. And they'll say, oh, I'll just put a, a sheet of wax thickness over the whole uh, uh, maxillary here. So I'll do that too. You can do either way. Uh, and the reason is either way is because with my custom tray and uh, stops, which I'll show you, those stops can be compound or a heavy body silicone, are going to lift the tray off the tissue. If I don't have any stops that are raising the tray off the tissue, then the tray could actually bottom out onto the tissue 
regardless if I put three sheets of wax or four sheets of wax. So really this uh, uh, stage of the game here is that we have no undercuts. We don't want the tray to be undercut and bind on any tissue, whether that thickness is one millimeter, two or five. Now many different uh, manufacturers of the uh, light cure tray. You could do a self curing tray, but uh, here we've got uh, dense splice triad, which I think of just last week. It's it's uh, discontinued, uh, and this is a clear one. But you can see the thickness of it here, and this would be more the one that we're traditionally using in the school. And we can use it for a custom tray and or base plate, but it's a little bit thinner. Regardless of the thickness, you could always double those sheets up if you wanted it thicker. Regardless of the thickness, uh, the principle's of the same. So a little bit of Vaseline on the model. If your tray is going to touch the model, obviously the, the tray material will not stick to wax. I'm just going to heat it up with my fingers here, kind of working it around, and then I'll uh, kind of join it together here, almost like a, a freenum. And then, you know, Densply will make certain tools. They have model release agent, which is like a Vaseline or an air barrier coating, which is uh, Vaseline can double as. It kind of takes that smear layer off. And then I'm going to adjust this. Now, where's my line? It's under there somewhere. I know I'm not too short of it. If anything, I'm a little overextended. And this kind of uh, expedites the uh, procedure that I'm going to uh, trim that in. So I'm going to take some leftover material that I may have and try to create a handle. Now a handle for the full denture should be straight up and down or no more than 10 degrees flaring forward. The handle, if it's straight out, will interfere with the, uh, with the lip, the bicularosaurus, and we will get a incorrect extension of the anterior section. So a shorter handle, Obviously that handle, if it's too long and the patient has a dentition on the opposing, it'll interfere with. So you have to be cognizant of what the opposing is. If it's a full denture, you might end up with a little bit more room, but still this handle does not have to be massive. Which mine's on the little larger side, but I'll trim it down. I just... And then we'll light cure that for a minute. So like I said, that handle should not be interfering. It should be uh, in the center. Even though remember that the custom tray that we're creating here is not an end product. The patient's not going to function with a custom tray. They want to function with dentures. So it is more of a... Uh, A tool, so to speak, or a means to the end. I mean, if we were at the dental laboratory and we make custom trays for $45 all day long, it's not exactly uh, uh, revenue generating as much as a lost leader in the, uh, the laboratory side of things, but it's a necess necessary evil to create good prosthetics. Uh, I find as a dental technician, though, more and more and more with new graduate dentists, uh, they're going ahead with alginates and the laboratories are like, sure, whatever, we'll make it. Uh, there's remakes, there's adjustments. And the dentist, instead of changing their um, technique, well, they'll just change their laboratory because they figure, <laughs> and they assume that that's the problem. But, uh, and it, it may be in some cases, but the majority of the time, it's the, uh, it's the treatment modality or the skill level 
of what the dentist chooses, uh, how they choose to operate. Uh, because an, and this is an extra appointment now, okay? We went from alginate, one appointment, now we're going to a custom tray, a second appointment. That's an additional appointment to the treatment plan, which is X amount of dollars, which is already like, you know, uh, predetermined, preordained. So an extra appointment is uh, extra time, extra time. Uh, I guess loss of revenues or potential revenues of doing something else. So, um, I would take the, uh, and again, yours might be pink. I'll do another one. I'll do the lower with the pink material. But um, don't leave it in there too long because you're going to find the wax is going to adhere to the tray. And then you're boiling this out and then it's messy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn it upside down. And I'll light cure for another uh, one to two minutes. It was a little bit... Uh, now here's my free-flowing wax on this side of my model. And uh, I'll boil that off before we uh, hand that in. But even, even as an alginate impression, I see that many dentists are moving forward without, and not even as accurate as this one. I mean, this one has all the anatomy. I mean, I can see the, the soft palate. I see all the freedom attachments, even though they're blown open with the alginate and overextended. But I see everything here. Hamular notch, incisive pillow, rugae. You know, there's no void in the mid-palatine uh, suture. Maybe a little void up here that was uh, a bubble. And then I'll, I'll boil that wax off while I'm trimming. But as you can see, I mean, we are overcomplicating the process of making a custom tray. I mean, I mentioned earlier that, you know, this is a $35 to $50 product uh, additional to the cost of the denture. Uh, takes, I guess, roughly 30 minutes to manufacture. Again, you see my pencil lines here. This is where roughly I'm going to finish my custom tray. And then when I put the stops, it'll be above that area. And then my compound will continue to those extensions. I mean, I think there's only one or two companies still making compound. Until, but you could use heavy body, but here's a compound stick uh, from Kerr. Uh, they say it's red, but it's, it's kind of brown. They come in different consistencies. The flow temperature, like, of this compound between, of the time that it's set and soft, the, the temperature range is very narrow. So this is going to be used on the extensions of my tray at the back as my four stops to lift the tray. So I have a tissue stop, creating an equal space of final impression material after I've done the border muscle molding or muscle trimming. So here's my custom tray. As you can see my handle, it's slightly angled forward, but not much. 10 degrees, 15 degrees, most. You can see that I'm overextended. I'm going to go over on the lathe and the handpiece. I'm going to round the edges, cut out the freenums, and um, well, I guess we can't. We'll do that real time.
So what I did quickly there is I just did half. Um, as I didn't move the camera, I just moved myself. Uh, on the next one, I'll move the camera. We'll watch the trimming. What did I use to trim? Really something, whatever I could use to do the fastest. I mean, because we said that this was only 30 minutes. And we talked about time value return. I used the white wheel and then you could use either a large uh, egg burr or a small or both. And then I'm going to move into a, a disc. And with that disc is, uh, I'll open up the Freenoms. Uh, you could do this on the lathe too, if you wished. A little over trimmed is better than under trimmed because I can fill it in with impression material in the border molding. I mean, over extension, you're not going to be able to uh, correct. And there we go. Okay. Enough with the disc. Then we can use a tapered burr if we want to. Uh, Now, the border of the tray is very important that it has a thickness to it because we need to have a material sit on top. Whether it's compound or a heavy body silicone, if it's very sharp edge and uh, not consistent thickness, I'm just doing half here to expedite the video for you here. And you can see the difference between the two halves already. If I was a little bit more careful cutting the uh, light cure, that would have been uh, saving me time trimming. So whether you save the time trimming or you save the time, uh, you know, cutting the length extension of the light cure, you're gonna spend a similar amount of time. I'd rather spend a little more time trimming. I guess it's bad habits. Also, I can control the thickness a little bit better now that I can visually see it off the model. Now, what's going to happen here is I was telling you, even though, depending how much wax, even if I had, you know, five layers of wax on here, the practitioner may only get the tray this far in the patient's mouth. Maybe even this far. Well, that's like 30 sheets of wax. Or they have a strong hand and they overextend the, the, uh, the impression. Now, what I'm going to do here which many of you are aware of, is I'm gonna take the, and I'll just uh, simulate here, uh, four compound stops. I'll just do two on the half here, so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, I would generally tell the practitioner, don't do this on top of the incisive of a pillow or any kind of mobile tissue. So I'm kind of favoring on the hard palate, on the inside of the ridge, and what I'm gonna ask the practitioner to do is when you have these four stops, this would be my first step taking a final impression for a complete edentulous client. Assuming this is the client, and this is gonna be tempered in warm water, and I'll guide this in place. And it's not gonna uh, probably come off because it's gonna to stick to the model because I didn't wet the model. So I'll just do that again. This time I'll wet the model. Yeah, great simulation, eh? <laughs> Maybe it's just a little softer. This is again simulation. So I'd have 
my four stops. So you can see this is an impression material. This is a file impression material, although very rigid, uh, the compound. This compound used to come in sheets. I guess it's a, a, a latent gene from the 1960s, but still works really well and is accurate. So there's two, I'm gonna put two more on this side. As you can see, it's kind of elevated the tray pretty much to where my line was, where again, my next step now of border molding, I'm going to take the uh, compound and lay it across the uh, quadrant. I would do the anterior quadrant first uh, or the post stem first if I chose, depending on which technique you're most comfortable with. Again, it has to be uh, in the patient's uh, mouth in the same position. So I have my stops. I go here and I'd go through my border molding exercise. I would take their uh, lip, extend the freedoms down, uh, roll the tissues down on the uh, buckle side to create that, the, not just the length of the, of the uh, extremities, but the width. So I would even get the mandible to go a little left and right. This will thin out over here around the tuberosity that it will just not only give me the length of the denture base, but will give me the width of the denture base to maximize here, especially in this area uh, where the buccinator muscle uh, comes in tight. And then uh, I would continue this all the way around, take the stops out, and then put in my final impression material. That would be it. So uh, a little brief, a little quick. But uh, we'll continue on with the, uh, the lower one, uh, and I'll use the, uh, the base plate or the pink material. Thank you.